For centuries, they have buried Africa's greatest inventions. History is filled with African brilliance that was either claimed by others or just intentionally forgotten. During the eras of slavery and colonialism, the law itself was a tool of suppression. Enslaved people weren't considered citizens and couldn't hold patents, which allowed their enslavers to legally own the fruits of the labor of the slave both manual and intellectual. Even after emancipation, getting recognition was a minefield. The dawn of the Jim Crow era in the United States led to a catastrophic drop in patents filed by black inventors, a fall they've never fully recovered from. To survive, many inventors had to hide who they were, sometimes hiring white actors to demonstrate their work just to get a foot in the door. This isn't some ancient history. It's a pattern, a system that repeats itself. But what if one story, one invention, could shine a light on this cycle? What if a high school student, with nothing but scrap parts and a powerful vision, created something that could liberate his community from the economic chains of modern technology? This is that story, and it's the story of why that invention has been kept from the world. What if you could make a call without a SIM card? What if you could talk to someone miles away without a cell tower and without ever paying for airtime again? It sounds impossible. But in a rural village in northern Namibia, a high school student named Simon Petrus made it a reality. He built a communication device that requires no SIM, no data plan, and no cellular network. It's a device that could change lives. And it's a device they don't want you to know about. The story of Simon Petrus isn't just about a clever invention. It's a harsh reminder of a system that seems built to stifle African genius before it can challenge the established order. The story begins not in a shiny Silicon Valley lab, but in the Ohangwena region of northern Namibia, a place where reliable cell service is a luxury. This is where Simon Petrus grew up. Like a lot of teenagers, he was fascinated by electronics, but his interest was more than just a hobby. He saw a problem. He saw how the digital divide was a real daily barrier for his community, cutting them off from information and from each other. He saw the constant drain of paying for airtime and decided to build an alternative. This wasn't just some idea he had one afternoon. It was a mission that took him two full years while he was still a student at Abraham Iambo Senior Secondary School. The challenge was huge. He had no funding, no fancy equipment, and no engineering degree. What he did have was a brilliant mind, a burning curiosity, and access to a junkyard of discarded electronics. With the incredible support of his unemployed parents, who sacrificed what little they had, over 2,000 Namibian dollars, or about $147 USD, he started his quest. For his family, it was everything. He became a modern-day alchemist, turning electronic junk into gold. He scavenged parts from old landline phones, broken TVs, and two-way radio systems. He took them apart, studied their circuits, and taught himself the principles of radio frequency transmission. He wasn't following a textbook, he was writing his own. His science teacher, Taini Vatellini, said that while Petrus was an average student in class, his genius for tech innovation was undeniable. The teachers at his school were his only guides. Slowly, piece by piece, his creation came to life. After two years of relentless work, he'd done it. He held in his hands a functional device that could make calls to other similar units using radio waves, completely free of charge and totally independent of any cell network. So how does this thing actually work? The genius of Simon's invention is in its simplicity. It completely bypasses the expensive infrastructure that telecom giants have spent billions on. Instead of relying on cell towers and SIM cards, Simon's device works using radio frequencies. Think of it like a walkie-talkie on steroids. The phone is a sophisticated two-way radio, making direct calls to other devices over shortwave frequencies. It's pure peer-to-peer -peer communication. No middleman, no network provider, no monthly bill. If you're in an area with a radio frequency, you can communicate. 
But Simon didn't stop there. He knew that in a rural community, a device needed to be a lifeline. He built a whole suite of tools into one unit. The device includes a TV receiver, a radio, an LED light, and even a fan. It has USB ports, so it can work as a power bank. And every single component is powered by his custom, radiator-based power system, making it completely off-grid, the perfect tool for places with unreliable electricity. Let that sink in. A high school student, with about $147 worth of scrap, created a multifunctional communication hub that offers services people pay hundreds of dollars for. His invention isn't just another gadget. It's a different way of thinking. It treats communication not as a product to be sold, but as a utility to be accessed freely. It has the potential to connect millions of people living outside the reach of traditional mobile networks. This wasn't just a science project. It was a real-world solution. And for a moment, it seemed like the world was paying attention. In 2016, Simon Petrus took his invention to a regional school technology competition and won. He then went to the Namibian National Science Fair, where he won again, taking first prize and catching the eye of the media. The story went viral. Headlines celebrated the Namibian team who built the SIM-free phone from scrap. For a brief moment, Simon was a national hero. The buzz was real. MTC, Namibia's largest telecom company, noticed. They publicly praised him and offered him a scholarship to study engineering, on the condition that he graduate high school and get into a university. It felt like the breakthrough he deserved. But then, the applause faded, and the silence that followed was deafening. The first blow came with his grade 12 exam results. Simon, the self-taught prodigy, failed to meet the university entry requirements. His principal called him a genius when it comes to technological innovation, but admitted he was not bright when it comes to books. The promised scholarship from MTC disappeared. The path to higher education was blocked. He was left in a cruel limbo. He had the talent, but not the paper to prove it. For years, he struggled to upgrade his marks, but his family couldn't afford the fees. Meanwhile, his world-changing invention sat on a shelf. No major institution stepped in to fund it. The media moved on. The national hero was forgotten. Years later, you could hear the frustration in his voice. What is the point of me introducing ideas to the nation, and nothing is coming on the board? He asked. I anticipated by now Namibians to use a phone without a SIM card. Why? Why would an invention with so much potential be left to wither? The easy answer is bad luck or academic failure. But if you look closer, a more disturbing pattern emerges, one that echoes a long history of inconvenient innovations being pushed aside. Simon himself believes his invention was seen as a massive threat to existing service providers. He built a device that makes their entire business model, selling SIM cards and data plans, irrelevant. His device frees the user from that system. And when profit is the main driver, freedom is bad for business. The official roadblock came from the Communications Regulatory Authority of Namibia, Suran. They stated the device couldn't operate because their system doesn't register it. They also claimed they never received a formal application from Petrus for type approval. This is a classic catch-22. To get his device approved, he needs funding and expertise. But to get funding, he needs a prototype that's already approved. He was trapped in a bureaucratic maze that protects the status quo. This isn't an isolated incident. For centuries, black inventors have faced systemic barriers. During slavery, their intellectual property was legally stolen. After Jim Crow laws cut them off from patent attorneys and universities, causing what economist Lisa Cook calls a huge drop in patenting by African Americans that hasn't yet recovered. The story of Simon's phone, which goes viral every few years, is a stark reminder. Each time, it generates outrage and hope, and then it vanishes again, with no real change. The story of Simon Petrus isn't over. He showed incredible persistence, 
and with the help of sponsors like the Sam Ujoma Foundation and Arongo Marine Enterprises, he finally graduated with a diploma in electronic engineering in 2023. But despite his qualifications and proven genius, as of late 2023, he was reportedly still unemployed, doing basic electronic repairs to get by while hoping for a chance to bring his bigger ideas to life. His dream of inventing something that would be known worldwide but would not leave Africa is still alive, but it's hanging by a thread. The system that buries inconvenient inventions thrives on our silence. It counts on us to see this story, feel angry for a moment, and then just scroll on. We can't let that happen. Sharing this story is about more than one man. It's about sending a message that we won't let brilliance be buried. It's about demanding a world where innovation is judged on its power to help people, not its potential to threaten profits. If you believe that genius should be nurtured, not neglected, and that communication should be a right, not a luxury, then don't be silent. Share this story. Talk about it. Ask why a man who holds a key to free, off-grid communication is still struggling to find his footing. Don't let them bury this story again. The story of Simon Petrus is a paradox. It's a story of incredible triumph and heartbreaking struggle. It's a testament to the power of ingenuity and a brutal indictment of the systems that crush it. His radio phone is more than just technology, it's a symbol. It's a symbol of what's possible when someone dares to think differently. It's a symbol of Africa's potential, not just to use technology, but to create it and lead with it. The forces of the old world, of control and profit, are powerful. They have managed to sideline Simon Petrus for years. But an idea, once it's been seen, can't be unseen. A story, once told, can't be completely erased. They may have hidden Africa's inventions for centuries, but a story shared is a fire that can't be contained. The world is watching now, and we're all waiting to see what happens next. Tell us what you think in the comments section below, and please do not forget to like and subscribe for more informative videos like this one. Thanks for watching.